Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's unique hustle. It's your boy ECO. I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, no, need no more Well, go on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. What I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast 101. We'll pop up first in line, I guarantee you. But if you want to see all our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. There you'll see all our visuals. Don't forget to hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. And let me tell you, y'all see us on the street and talk about how we love your content. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Become a member. Under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below, there's a link that says join our membership. Follow the instructions, and that's how you can support Boss Talk 101, your favorite podcast. Thank you, and we love you. Yo, 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 man. We down here in Miami, man. Hey, man, this is the first time Boss Talk 101 is even in this place. We've been down here before, me and the wife, but we have never brought Boss Talk 101 down here. So it's going down, man, the first ever. And he from Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. He on, is. Let's talk. Juice the Mac is in the building. What's going on, bro? What's going on, big dog? You know, I'm just, it's, it's blessings, man. You know, we outside just prospering. You know what I mean? Elevating that life. That's all I'm doing, man. Pushing this music, pushing business, pushing everything. You always all everywhere, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. I've been watching your moves, man, and everywhere you go, you make a noise. So Absolutely. I want to go back, though, to uh, Miss Jamaica. Miss Jamaica, let's go down through there on uh, Juice the Mac. Let's, Juice find the Mac. Out, yeah, let's find out what's really going down with this man. So you born and raised in Oklahoma City, right? Absolutely. With your mom and dad? So my pops, my mom well, had me at 14, mm -hmm. and then my pops, he he was convicted of murder. How so, old was your pops when he was messing with your mom and had you? 15. He was 15, young. so he was young, so he yeah. wasn't too much older. Yeah, he wasn't too much young, young I mean older, but... Yeah. So how old was he when he went to prison? 16. Right after? 27, 27 years. years. I 27 saw that when years. I was looking you up. 27 years. So he was missing it in your life. Yeah. Did your mom ever take you to go see him? Absolutely. So you were raised with a father behind bars. So was he able to tell you, don't do this, do that, give you any knowledge from behind bars? I mean, you know, I ain't going to lie. I didn't want to hear I didn't want to hear that, man. I ain't going to lie. Because it's kind of like I seen him locked up. I'm like, man, I don't want to hear that <laughs> shit, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, I guess I didn't want to be locked up just like him. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely moved different and definitely was way smarter how I moved. But, yeah, at the time, I didn't want to hear that. I actually had, you know, another man who uh, was my stepfather. stepfather. Yeah, mm -hmm. who, I saw that. who uh, he, ended up, he ended up dying in a car wreck. But, but how know. old was he when he, he came into your life? How uh, old were you, I mean, when he came into your life? Like two, I probably was like two years old. Oh, so she yeah. found him right after. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right after okay. He got locked up. She met my stepdad, and you know he kind of we, you know, from Spencer, Oklahoma. And if you know anything about Spencer, Oklahoma, it's a country black town, and they go down out there. You know what I mean? So you know, I grew up out there, and we just, you know, and y'all, y'all did good together. Absolutely. Cause you know how some people are like you're not my daddy type thing, yeah. but. Well, see, at the time, I didn't really know that he was my pops. Oh, okay. You got to think. I was like. Two years yeah, old when he came. One or two. It was one of them. One or two. So I really didn't know that one my pops. So, you know, that was it. all I knew. I didn't really know that he was my pops until I was like seven. Mm. And then my mom went ahead and told me. And then that's when I started going to go see my uh, real pops. Oh, at that wall. age. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So was um, your stepdad, because sometimes when a stepdad come in place and um, take on that role and does such an amazing job, sometimes, depends on the man and his understanding, sometimes they want to say, okay, I want to adopt you right? type thing. Did that ever come in play? Uh, absolutely not, because at the time, you know, he treated me like he would, like, you know, I was his own. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was never nothing like that, you know. You know, you didn't, there was no need for it. No, nah, it wasn't no need for it. She ended up, she was with him for like 15 years, and then she ended up getting married to somebody else. Oh, so she ended up leaving him. Yeah, she ended up there. Okay, yeah. how, did, how did that affect you? Because you had built a bond with this man. I mean, it really didn't affect me at all because it was just like, you know, I felt like when they got rid of, when they stopped, he stopped, you know, being my pops type really? shit. Really? Yeah. So, but at this time, I didn't care about none of that shit, you know what I mean? Just mm. being real. Like, I was playing sports, 
You know what I mean? You could. What did you, you play? Running back, football. Were you good? Come on, yeah. stop right there. Don't even. Yeah, please. big dog. Man, come on, bro. <laughs> For real. Bro, what What's you running in the 40, man? Don't pull no Cat Williams on Boss Talk 101. <laughs> nah, like, what now, you listen, running in the 40? Nah, 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 what right you now, running in the 40? Now, right now, I'm a little. I'm a little. That, man, no, back right then. Back, back then. I'm playing like 4'4, four, 4'5. Four, four, come on, man. Look, I ain't going to lie. You can Google me. <laughs> Yeah, you can Google count. me. You can Google. You Google my first last name. Say, day. all Google I'm saying I'm is, man, if I had a guy on here, and he said the same thing. When I Googled him and I started mm-hmm. looking at his highlights, he went down. He pulled a hamstring. He didn't tell me nothing about that <laughs> on the show. Pulled a hamstring. Right. I'm, I, I'm not going to go too far in detail, right. but I met one of his other homeboys who took his position. Uh-huh. He never regained that position. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of stories people tell on this show, and yeah. sometimes they leave things out. Uh-huh. And I'm just saying, you know, did you ever, you know, who hit you the hardest, bro? Let's be real. Man. Don't don't hold back, man. You you did you ever get, you know, you didn't know we're coming and you got that whole face mask twisted backwards. Oh hell yeah, I got <laughs> man, man, you man, I got fucked up a couple times. Cause you I wasn't that big. Okay. See, I, I just got big when I got older. I was actually kind of smaller. So, you know, we was playing this team called the Titan Bears, man. And this kid damn near looked like he was about 350, man. <laughs> niggas, I'm talking about at 12 years old. I still remember this hit. <laughs> Nigga hit me so hard, man. I had grass in my mouth and all. I was spitting out all types of shit, man. So for sure I remember that. I don't know his name, but trust me, <laughs> I remember that hit. All I seen was white. You hear me? Yeah. I, I, you know, you, you can remember the one, the main things that make sense to you. Like, I remember we was in the seventh grade. i never forget it was a dude. I was running the ball, too. He didn't look like he's supposed to be in seventh grade, dude. He like he supposed to have been in college. Yeah. He was probably about six six running. He was running the ball, but we we always hitting him low. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So because he's tall. Yeah, we never nobody was trying to hit that boy up top. You know. See, look, and this the thing. When I was going to like Texas, when we go to tournaments, I don't know what the hell y'all see them <laughs> kids out there. I'm gonna keep it real. But when we seen them boys get out, them boys was big. You know what I mean? But. Yeah, I, I love football at one point in time. That's what really kept me out from going all the way left for me. Mm. If I, I honestly feel like if I wasn't playing sports, man, I I'd don't know the where streets. the hell I would be at, just to be honest, because I was chasing that league. You know what I'm saying? But why did you stop? Shit, I hurt my leg. There How it is. There, you? there it is. Bring uh, it on, baby. I Let's was going to call it. So, I already oh, so it. Took you, so it took you Where to you college. Where did you go to college at? Uh, Northeastern State. So you didn't go to Oklahoma State or OU? Uh, uh-uh. That's so where your you home? Did you ever think nah, about going there nah, when you were nah, young? See, look. You know, I was, so I rehabbed all the way to my junior year, and then I was walk, I was going to walk on to OU, and then they fired their coach. That's okay. when they fired the coach, and then all the whole staff left, and then I ain't going to lie. I was already a year out of football. I was like, man, fuck this shit. <laughs> man, I ain't going back. I'm cool. And you know, my mom, she always wanted me to graduate and shit, but right. she knew she knew that one for me, man. She, she knew. knew school one for me. I'm just being real. I, I tried, you know what I mean? But I had to make me some money, man. But it's I not even to. that. As a, as a mother for me, and I don't know your mom, mm-hmm. but... For our kids, we want you to, anything you start, just finish it. Right, right. Because to us, later on, if you finish school, it's like a pattern. You're going to pick up all these different projects and not right, finish it. Right, absolutely. So that's what well, I think about. Well, you know, I feel like, you know, during this time, you know, a lot of the kids, they go get them loans and be owing them. And then, that, you know, I'm just glad that I left when I did because it's like, you know, I don't owe, I don't you don't owe, owe that much, man. Oh, that much, but you owe yeah, some. I still owe a little bit, but I don't owe that much. Okay. Yeah. Some of these cats be having a million, million oh, yeah, dollars. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, 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 yeah. And can't I, get a job. That's can't get a up, job, man. can't get an income tax. Man, <laughs> in, income tax washed up, man. <laughs> so let me ask you this, man. Like, like, when did you first know that you was going to do music? Right. Let's jump into that. All right, so this is the thing. So I used to always be rapping. My stepdad, he was a real hustler. He always had me around people. I used to rap when I was a little kid. But when I was pursuing uh, <coughs> football, I put that shit on the back burner because I'm chasing the league. I ain't trying to do no music. It just didn't happen until like two years ago. Okay. I was just a cat in the background kind of like chilling. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wanted to put my homies on. You feel me? Until one time one of my homeboys, you know, he didn't do the shit that I thought he would have had did. You know what I mean? He kind of played a little bit. You know, that's my brother still. But he played. And then my pops, he was like, nigga, he like, 
Nigga, you get you you got this far from investing in yourself. Why would you get this far and then invest in somebody else? You got here because of you. You need to invest in yourself. And that shit stuck with me. And you know, a year later, we here now. That's the way know? I think the same thing Brad One of Kane told me when he was on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, just trying to invest and do things with others and then they're not gonna see the vision right. really the way that you're gonna see it. Yeah. So I think that's so important to figure out you no, know, self awareness is something that Absolutely. is on a whole nother and, level. And then it's also too, you can't control what other people see, I got my own label too. So it's like you can't control what your artist gonna do. You know what I mean? That was the point for me, is like, man, I'm finna get off, I'm finna build this up. You know what I mean? And I know I ain't finna mess myself over. You know what I mean? So, you know, when I when you come with that, I know I ain't finna mess myself over. I'm good with the mods. Yeah. But in yeah. an industry, in, in, in the time that we're at right now where I see a lot of these young kids coming up in the music industry, and then now you starting later on, how... I know for females, they'll be like, okay, you too old. Don't mm-hmm. even even go into mm-hmm. it. But for a man, it might be a little bit different. Did you get any discouragement? Be like, man, why are you even trying to do this right now? Absolutely not. Because the thing is this. I don't have to do this. I got other businesses. I got my own hot shot company. I'm uh, invested in gold and diamonds. I got my own uh, studio, you know. And I'm finna get my own club and dispensary. So, like, the business is good for me. So, I, I, this is, I'm just doing this because I like to do it. Yeah, and, and that would definitely be the reason because I'm going to be honest with you. I was about to ask you, like, how important it, and we ain't going to get in. I want to get into your music, but I do want to know, like, you do this for recreation pretty right, much. Right, right. But in, in my, in, to me, it's more branding. It's also something that where you might, when it comes to merch and all kind of stuff, it opens up doors. So, like, the music, when you look at these people out here doing music right now, it look kind of weird because, you know, Snoop Dogg, he, he complains about the streaming numbers, how mm-hmm. much you make on streaming. Like, and, and it's no secret that a lot of times people are not making the, music, right. the money in the music like they used to make. And you have to cope with that by doing other things to complement the fact that you love music. Right. Well, see, one thing about it is I'm a hustler. So, like, the streaming for me... Is like I'm not worried about the streaming at this point. What I'm more, what I'm worried about in the music side is captivating the fans and getting them to go to my website and spend in that bag and buy merch. That's all. That's I mean, that's the know, game. That's the game right there. Buy my merch, man. Yeah. Support me. You know what I mean? Yes, I want you to listen to my music, but I would much rather you give me, you know. Thirty dollars for a shirt or yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But so they gotta love your music to be able to do that. Oh yeah, boy. You know I ain't gonna lie. I'm hard. What kind of messages are you giving to your people? See, one thing about people, I'm a real spiritual person, right? Mm-hmm. So I just pop my day to day. You know, I teach. I, I talk about getting money. You know what I mean? You know, I I got love songs, stuff like that. I'm just popping my day to day. You know, and I think that's why people gravitate to me because I put that real stuff out. You know what I mean? I put the real music out so people can actually listen to. You can actually vibe. Ain't nobody died in my raps, but guess what? It's a whole lot of money. You know what I mean? And a whole lot of honey. Well, let's but talk I about. Whole, I got a question about yeah. something on that because um, yeah. this part I, I haven't listened to your music, but I was just curious to know: Have you put this into your music? I know you have an autistic child. Mm-hmm. Do you rap about that? Absolutely. And the struggles? Absolutely. See, look, this the thing, right? I, I got records that I haven't put out yet, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that's what turned my hustle up. That's what you know I was what trying I mean? to see. When I was when I was um when I'm, when my son was diagnosed with autism, that was a hard pill for me to swallow. How long ago was that? Uh, six years. Okay. He, How old is he? He's seven. Okay. So we found out when he was one. one. So you know, at the time I was working this job, and I didn't really understand like you know. I, this is hard for a man to go through, you know what I mean? But one thing for sure, for certain, it gave me the ambition that I needed. I was working two jobs trying to figure it out, and that's always been my, that's always been my, like, my it, it factor. And I feel like when you're doing music, you got to have that it factor. 
you know what I mean, or just life. What thrives you? What's your purpose in life? And I never wanted my son to go without, you know what I mean, even because, you know, the stri- with life Or to be general. teased or to yeah, be sure. going through because autis- autistic kids go through a lot. Absolutely. And that's what made me, that's what made me like, you know what, I'm going to go so hard for my son, he ain't going to never have to worry about this. You feel me? And that's, I really did. Like, that's my, that's my every day. That's who I go hard for. And it's been great motivation because we can continue to keep moving and keep grinding and keep doing their thing. Yeah, um, I, I know we interviewed T-Rail and he's the same way about right. his son. Mm-hmm. You you know who T-Rail is? The, yeah. the, the yeah, 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 for sure. He his has son is autistic too. Yeah, yeah. is the autistic he have Down syndrome. Down syndrome, Down syndrome. sorry. Down syndrome. I keep yeah, on I saying. Yeah, and he look out for him and he always doing stuff for with him in uh-huh. Walmart and just uh-huh. making things interesting, you know, centered around his child. And and that's what I thought about when you was talking. Mm. So I think that's that's heavy, bro. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely heavy. But you know, I feel like everybody got to go through something. And you know, when you discover your purpose in life and what you're supposed to be doing, it's like it's a blessing and it's it's real powerful sometimes because some people wake up and don't know what they got going on. You know, I got I got a goals that I'm trying to make. You know what I mean to ensure that he's never had to worry about nothing. But I got to know this though because a lot of people don't know what it's like to have an autistic child. What are some of the struggles you have to deal with? I know you you might not have to deal with him all the time. Maybe it's the mom who's dealing uh-huh. with him all the time. Yeah. But what are some of the struggles and what level of autism does he have? So my so my son, his is is the spectrum. It's the high. He's probably like right in the middle. So my son, like the first beginning stages, it was rough. I ain't going to lie to you because it's like far as like potty training and stuff like that. That was hard. Like and It took a long time. Oh, it took a long time. It took like... Man, it, it took took us like five years. Really? Yeah. And then he's nonverbal. Oh. So that was that was the thing that really like touched me tough because it's like I'm taking him to school. We got he's him in ABA therapy and stuff like that. Teaching him to talk. He can't tell me when people are doing wrong. And I know he sometimes he could be hard dealing with, you know, first right. temper tantrums, throwing, crying, all this type of and stuff. And he does all of that. Yeah. Well not no more. Right, not right. No Back more. then. Yeah. Right. You know, um, you know, and, and my mom has helped me tremendously with this, you know what I mean? And, you know, without her, you know, his progress, I don't know how much I could have did this, you know. Right. You know, it was, it was, it's tough at times, but, you know, like I said. God put us through things for a reason. Absolutely. And he's sharp on your patience because that, that's what that does. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, like I said, he's coming along so well now. Like now he's. Way more mature now. Mm-hmm. He don't cry, nothing. He's just, he do his day to day. So Still you know, nonverbal? Yeah, he's still nonverbal. So mm-hmm. he talking, he talk, he use his actual pegboard. So it's like when you press the button, it tell you what you want. Mm-hmm. So that's what he been doing. But now nah, I got him in the best uh, autism schools that we got in Oklahoma. And like I said, I'm, I got, so I got full custody of my son. Oh, you do? Yeah. I wow. got full custody of my son. But, you know, we, we still working with her, the mom, too. Right. You know what I mean? It ain't like none of that. But I make the the decisions on everything. Oh, that's dope. Wow. So, yeah. One thing I can say, man, is you're blessed to uh, have the patience and just the, know, the, 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 the know-how, you know, to be able to change and transform whenever needed to be who you got to be for your kids. You know, right. I think that's more gangster than anything Anything else that the music and all this stuff don't matter, man. Family is always going to be first, bro. And to see a brother that's sticking it out and really putting it out here that, yeah, hey, I'll stand up for what's mine, that's hard in itself. So no, thank for you sure. for being I, that father. Absolutely. You know, you know, they always try to play black man like they ain't, they, taking, that's, that's, we ain't taking care of our kids, man. That's what so, I'm you saying. Know, I, I'm a huge advocate of taking care of your kids and standing on business. You know, I'm a huge family man. And he's how many kids do you have? I just got one. Just one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's talk about the music a little bit. Rockstar life. Like, what was the inspiration behind that? You know, I just feel like the life that I'm living right now is very rock star like, and it just felt like you know I do different music and the music video. I just wanted to show y'all a different aspect of it. That's why you, you know? had that hat on. Yeah. Well, I'm country. I grew up in the country. I know. I grew up riding horses, playing crops. So you know, I want to show y'all this is how this is how I grew up. 
Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. We grew up on you know gold datings on the cut, you know all that on the color, all that. So, you know, I just wanted to show y'all where it showed the people, and it just came out authentically. But you know, I ain't gonna lie, my I got so much hard hard music that it's just man. When I when y'all really get a chance to hear this, y'all gonna be impressed. And when the world catch on to my music and catch on to my movement and see how impressive, I'm telling you, we finna turn it up. Wow. What about um, when you think about just the, the, the way, when you think about the sound of the music today, like, uh, do you feel like you, you, you fit in the mode to where, you know, you could pop something out, get your big song out of it? Because a big song is important. I always say that when I deal with like the role, I know he's ice cream paint job. If mm-hmm. I deal with, you know, like whoever I deal with, they got these huge songs, right? right. Bone, I just did him, you know, um, homegirl, you know, different people got these what you going to do to try to apply the pressure to get this big song? Well, you know, this is the thing, man. I ain't skipping the process with this. I got the work that thing. I probably got fifteen, probably 1,500 to 2,000 songs in the cut. Okay. I'm working every day. Like, this is this is a job for me. Okay. I'm in the studio literally every day. I mm-hmm. don't miss one day unless I'm going on vacation. That's, like, hard. that's how that's much hard. I work. So I ain't worried about that. Like I said, when the when – the, when the world catch on to what I got going, when the world catch on to the drift and see what I'm doing, see how I work I'm going, see what I'm carrying the brand, they going to fall in love with me. And also, shit, I'm the first artist from Oklahoma City to really pop it like this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, when you the first to something, it's a whole different, you know, it's a lot of responsibility that come with that. So I'm cool with, I'm cool. Like I said, I ain't, I ain't finna, uh, I ain't rushing nothing. Nobody likes to win a vlog. What what is that? Talk to me about this, huh? Cause I felt like you know if you a winner, you know that project was just cause I was feeling this. I've been winning my whole life, but when you a winner, people don't want to put you. They don't want to bring you to them steps. So sometimes you gotta create your own steps, mm-hmm. and that's what I did when I first started uh, doing music. I reached out to some. The cats in my city that I felt like that was popping at the time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know, they tried, you know, they they didn't fuck with me. You know, I was pressing this shit by myself. But, you know, it was cool, though. I went tripping on it. One thing for certain is shit, I just got my own. Like I said, got my own studio, got my own vibes, do my own concerts. I, I did a free concert for my whole city. I brought uh, Peasy, and uh, I brought Peasy, and I brought OG3. To my concert, we did a whole concert for free for my city. Wow, that's big. You know what I mean? And, that's huge. And we just we just gave like two hundred fifty backpacks to the kids, you know, for a school drive. That's huge. You know what I mean? So it just it just that's it's, that's the type of stuff that matters because I felt like when I was growing up, the OGs didn't do that for us. You know what I mean? I I remember I remember this story vividly like. I remember I was trying to cut grass. I had got a lot more. I was probably like seven years old, man. And I used to go knock the door. Hey, man, let me get, let me cut the grass. Mm-hmm. Now at the time, I was trying to cut the grass for a dollar. Wow, man, don't you know? You know how many? Uh, <laughs> you for, they forget out on you. No, yeah, no, listen, dollar? listen, listen, bro. They was not messing with me. Uh uh-uh. uh Yeah. So you know, growing up. I had I had OG cash, some of them that helped me out, used to give me money and stuff. But I just remember those times, so that's what made me want to be an advocate for the kids. Because a lot of the times, bro, like, you know, you don't know what these kids is going through. You don't know their environments. So, you know, I just always want to help. That's just like, I feel like that's my that's my thing I love to do. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's real important for me to uh, affect kids' lives, mentor Somebody the kids. Somebody got to do it. Absolutely. Wow. What the business is. Mm-hmm. Well, you, what, talk to me. What the business is a record me and Ice Word Vezo did, and you yeah, know, I seen it. Yeah, we linked in. You like I said, Peasy my Peasy my bro. Like I linked up with him. I called. Uh, we flew up. We flew up. We drove. I drove sixteen hours from Detroit. Met up with Peasy, and we locked in, and we've been locked in there since. Okay, you know that's family. So the Detroit, the Detroit cast, that 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 whole little shit from. Babyface Ray to Icewear, that's all family. Okay. You know what I mean? And we just linked in with each other, and we ain't never stopped messing with each other. Wow. We solid, so. T- talk to me how how, how you and uh, Freeway Ricky linked up. I called in on you. I told you I made <laughs> yeah. the call. 
And I know Sean, my boy, and he ain't never led me astray, but I still double down. I had to make the call. Yeah, for sure. I had to see if, okay, who is this guy, man? What was it? Oklahoma City? Because you got to realize, Freeway, a lot of people don't know it. He out of uh, Tyler, Texas. Yeah. So me and him, we East Texas boys. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, we always sure. been talking. I, ever since I started this show, I, I flew That's up to hard. L.A. and interviewed him. And I always look for him because we both come from, a you know, our street life background. So I had to go find him when I started this and do mm -hmm. the same thing we're doing right here now. So just talk to me about how you and him linked and how did he become such an inspiration for your movement? Well, you know, one thing for sure, like, I met, I met um, Freeway through work. Work is my manager. Okay. So, you know, he was signed to Freeway Records, and I don't know particularly, like, how they, how they met, but... You know, he introduced me to Freeway. I let Freeway listen to my music, and he instantly told me, like, bro, you got it. Keep going. And, you know, we just built something special. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, like that's really unk to me. You know what I mean? I didn't pull it up to his his block. He didn't pull it up to mine. That's you right. You know what I mean? And, and anything that I ever, anything I ever asked for him, bro, he ain't, he ain't charged me nothing. Never. You know what I mean? He just always told me, like, bro, you going to make it. You know what I mean? Just make sure that you don't forget about me when you get up there. <laughs> that's yeah, come him. Come on, man. That's old school. That, I, I mess with, bro. I mess with him. They can't mess with Rick, man. That's my boy. <laughs> like, for real. That's my guy, for real. Wow. Anything I want, he 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 can help me. You know what I mean? That's real. That's real, man. Like I said, you you always saying busy, man. Um, I seen you on uh, Sway, man. Like, how was that experience? Man, legendary. Because... Like I said, coming from Oklahoma, you don't see that. You don't see us really going to these platforms. And just to know that, you know, Sway is another one of my good partners. Always been you know, respectful. He, he messed with me tough, you know. And I think when people meet me, they they mess with me because it's just like, I ain't trying to be nobody that I ain't. You know what I mean? I'm just being cool, calm, and collected. And, you know, you like my music, you like my music. You know, you mess with my movement, you mess with my music. But I ain't I ain't got nothing to prove to these cats, man. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just living my life, you know. And I just was, it was a blessing to, you know, get up there and just be on that platform because I got a lot of labels calling me from that, you know. Yeah, yeah, I had to, I had to ask you about Sean. Like, how how'd you link up with this guy, man? Like, like what, what the heck you doing down here in Miami, man? What's going on? So, you know, I linked up with my man, Sean, through my uh, manager, Work. Wow. This and dude, I, this dude Work, where is he at? He in, he in Oklahoma right now. All right, let him know I said yeah. what's up. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying? Yeah. And shout out on Boss Talk 101, man. Shout out Work, man. DJ Work. Look like he doing his job because every time I mention something, he putting it down. Oh, yeah, for sure. One thing about it is, man, he, he ran me into a lot of people. You know what I mean? Work was a, nut, a guy that he had all these connections, but he didn't have no artists that he could really just take them to there without burning bridges. So when I came, it's like, shoot, we here. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I, ain't, I I'm good at keeping, you know, the relationship strong and stuff like that. So, you know, and like I said, most people vibe with me because I'm just being me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I ain't yeah. trying to be nothing I ain't, you know. So that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Shout out work. Man. But, but, you know, I think I met, I don't know, is it Maserati J? That's, 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 how that's how y'all linked in? He linked in with Maserati J. Shout out Maserati J. And they linked in with each other. And then, you know, one day we I flew work out here. And he was like, I got a homeboy, Sean. Let's pull up to a studio. And then we pulled up. And, and then when I walked down. in with Sean, it was just like another brother. You know what I mean? Cat keeping it real, you know. So it's a beautiful thing. I feel like when real cats link up, it's always, it's like a holiday because it ain't that many of us out here. You know, yeah, you know them true Max and Pimp say it's, it's always a treat when real player, two players meet, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, like, okay, so when you look at these guys out here, all the caliber artists, if you could choose from anybody, who would that person be that you would like to work with? Like somebody, if you could pick anybody. You know... I ain't gonna lie. Right now, I didn't, I feel like I work with people that I would like to work with, and I just feel like right now it's just like I'm not focused on that okay. because it's like I didn't did tracks with cats, and they won't man, even share them. Man, listen, I didn't did tracks with people. Man, they won't even. Uh, 
I'm paying them. They would act like it's it's hard for them to they share, even deal share with the it. song. They won't even share the song. Right. And, and that's song. important in this climate that absolutely, we're in. Absolutely. You won't even post my album and you're supposed to be my boy. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how hard is that? And I know you done seen that where dudes say they're rocking with you, but yeah. then as soon as you post something or as soon as you're trying to push something, they pull back. It's yeah. almost like a hate, a, 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 a just a, well, you a know, come on now. You know what I learned about this, man? A lot of these cats, the perception is they own, but they trying to get on. Okay. So they feel like, all right, I ain't finna let him pass me because in this game, you can get passed quick. Tomorrow, somebody will pass you. You know what I mean? So, but it was a hard adjusting for me because I felt like these cats out here, man, like I, I felt I'm a real dude, man. Like, for real. Like, I, I, I take care of my family. I'm a family man. Like, everybody good around me. So when, when I meet these cats and you act like you're my partner, but then when it's time to do the business on certain stuff, you stop answering the phone and you ain't keeping it real, I can't mess with that, man. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that was a, that was hard for me, you know what I mean? But, you know, you you eventually get adjusted to it. You know what I mean? These cats ain't real. And that's why I say I, I ain't giving these cats my money. Yeah, yeah. So all that. So see, yeah, so so now you got me thinking. Like you really have an issue with doing features with dudes because of some of the people that done crossed you in the wrong way. Yeah, it's just it's just like I right, put it like this. Why would I give somebody a hundred thousand for a verse or twenty thousand, ten thousand when I could be putting that into my career? That's real. You gonna get on by setting trends. You are gonna get on by putting on putting yourself on. These cats ain't finna come and put you on. So once once I got out of that mentality, like I'm sitting around thinking somebody finna give me a bone, once I realize I gotta go get this for myself. And that's what exactly what I've been doing, going to go get it myself because I know I can't depend on these cats to do that. But you gotta think about it though, man, Juice. If somebody's got a somebody got a wave or you can cross market and get mm -hmm. into their space and, and intercept some right. of the traffic that they dealing with, that it's not just a bad move. Yeah. So you can you if you meet the right person at right. the right time doing the right thing and treat it as business and walk away from it, yeah. you might tap into something and you already won. It right. ain't really about them when well, you think about well, it. Well, I'm going to tell you like this, right? Absolutely. And I got relationships in the game. Like I said, the young Scooter was a cat Man. I messed with. I, I fuck with Scooter because... You know, he really showed me. He still be showing me love. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I said, Peasy. So you did a guys. you did a feature with Young School? Yeah, yeah, Blick Blick. We did a feature, and you know, like I said, he been. I could call him any time. He messed with me, so it's just like I got I got real partners I mess with. But my the the bulk of what I'm trying to say is, you gonna get on by putting yourself on. I feel you. You want to put more into you. Right. Put more into you. Instead of giving somebody 100000 put 100000 to your career and see where you're going. That's how much I, that's the type of confidence I got within myself. You're just saying I'm going to bet on me. Yeah, I'm going to bet on me. And that and that's just been, that's how I've been operating my whole life. I'm going to bet on me. I Don't don't get me wrong. I work with artists. I ain't got no problem with working with artists, but it just, I'm not, I'm going to put money into myself. Yeah. That's it, bro, because I'm going to put my own cell phone. I ain't tripping. I don't need no handout. I feel you. And then, like I said, Peasy and them boys, they I am cross with, with them. them. So you just keeping that. You, well, you talked about T. Jones, too. So you, it's certain people you picking out of oh, yeah, this spot. Oh, yeah, shout out, shout out to T. Jones. But yeah. it's certain people that you picking. Yeah. What's the process to picking who you want to work with? Well, you know, any time that I'm somebody who could analyze the whole room. You got to be, I'm a spiritual person. I can feel energies. That's why I know, like, even when I be moving around, I know who the fuck with. I can, you can feel people's energy. That's real. You know what I mean? Not everybody got that uh, gift, but I can. So, you know, when I linked up with T. Jones, I seen that was a good brother. And me and him got the same thing going on for ourselves. So it's just like, you know, we put it together. That's how we do it. You want to be with people that's coming up. You know what I mean? Because you could do a song with somebody and they already popping. They fans just going to bypass you. But if you coming up together, you can put money up. You can put money up together. That's, that's real. what my cats be doing. That's what we do. We put money up together. I didn't even think about it, but you're so right. That's so real. Like, they can bypass you and just see you. They don't even see you. Oh, absolutely. So you got to figure out a way to make it to where it's about you. 
I mean, you back in the days, you I don't know if y'all remember that. They didn't just, if you might not get a feature on here, you might just have them standing in, just rocking with you. You, you remember that? Mm-hmm. It wasn't always about somebody being on the song. They was just being in the video. Mm-hmm. They don't really do that as much like they used to. Just standing around. It's usually if they in there, they want to be on the song. They right. ain't doing no feature with you unless they can do a feature with you. They ain't doing no hanging out. Right. And you see, see what I'm saying? See, that's where a lot of cats do. They want to hang out. Man, listen, I don't give a, man, respectfully, I don't give a damn about no rappers, man. Yeah. Period. Once I realized is the people that's going to help you in this industry is the people behind the closed, you know what I mean, closed doors. That's when I realized the rapper really ain't got no juice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Really, you know, with the streams not paying you that much money, I mean, you know, rappers really, you know, if you don't do it right, it's only a certain uh, percentage of rapper that's really getting to it. Mm-hmm. Everybody else in debt. So, you know, with that being said, I'm a hustler, man. I gotta, I gotta analyze and and see that's what's real. going on. That's so, real. I gotta ask this because the season that we're in right now, everything is all about politics. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> jumping out there, <laughs> who you got for the new president yeah. of the United States? Get him. I ain't gonna lie, I'm wrong with Trump, man. <laughs> there it is, there it is. Wow, and Trump. why is this you. so? And why is this so? Why not Kamala? I just felt like right now, it ain't no, I just feel like her past. And I feel like basically the Democratic Party, years we've put black people, they've been using black vote and saying they're going to do stuff for black people. And I feel like even with Obama, they didn't do anything. You know what I mean? And with that being said, you know, Kamala has a past to locking people up and giving them max sentences. And I just, it's kind of hard for me to, you know, I got family members that was affected in some of, you know, those drug laws that, you know, Joe Biden in 1994, where, you know, the three strike law. Mm -hmm. I got family members that went along with that. So I feel like that would be going against the grain. And I feel like with Trump, you know, you know, regardless of the politics and all that, man, it's like. I was getting money with Trump, man. I'm gonna just be real. <laughs> it always boils back down to that. That's what everybody says about for the people who are voting for Trump. Yeah, I was getting money with Trump, and it's just like you know, I mess with what he got going on. But is that enough reason to vote for him? Absolutely, absolutely, it is. Money can change a lot of things. <laughs> money can change environments. You know what I mean? Money can change, you know, turn it up to generational wealth. Absolutely. And also, I didn't mess with with Joe Biden because (laughs) I'm going to tell you why I didn't mess with him. Because, bro, he got the people trying to check cash out. Bro, come on, bro. He got a lot of stuff going on. Like, bro, you want to check the cash out, man? What's going on, man? Let the cash app people live, man. (laughs) I got to pay taxes on cash app now? Come on, man. I ain't messing with that. Wow. I want to ask you about the Welcome to Our Side tour. Like, you getting ready to do this tour, and, and and it's going to be something that you guys are going to be rolling out. You know, like, how did you guys put that together? Is this something that you did on your own budget, or is this something that somebody helped you to, you know, put together? So, I do everything on my own budget. Okay. Everything. You know what I mean? But it's just like this, right? Peasy and I Swear Vezo, they came together and said, hey, we finna do a tour. PZ posted it. That's my brother. I call him regularly. We chatted regularly. I called him. I said, hey, bro, I need to be on that. He said, say no more. It was just that simple. That simple. And, you know, my budget and what I'm doing, of course, I'm, 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 I got my own team as well. So I got my promotional company. I got a, I got a promotional company full of people. So during the concert, they going to have the little uh, QR codes. With my name on it, and I got females hustling, making people download my songs and my music, and going to the website. So yeah, we pressing it hard, but yeah, wow. but yeah, I'm I'm funded in a hundred percent for sure. Wow. Okay, I well, <laughs> one more question for you right now. Okay, you know, um, Fifty Cent did that um, the big show in Shreveport, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. Yeah, and now. Hurricane Chris came out and said, hey, but you did not have anybody from Shreveport who performed. You didn't. Be, everybody was out of town and so forth, so forth. 
Do you agree with Hurricane? Or do Absolutely you agree with- not. Absolutely not. Why? Man. And see, this is why I say with black people, man, we got to stop this shit, man. You mad at another man. He That's just be real what he mad about. He mad because he didn't get called up there to do the stuff, bro. That's be real. Because it was other uh, people from Louisiana under there. There was. Fredo Bang was there. Uh, who else was Master up there? P. Master, Master P. P. Come on, bro. So it's like, come on, bro. Like At the end of the day, that's what we got to stop. You can't blame another man and get mad at another man because you ain't got no motion. And he brought up the fact that how much money he's paying the police officers. What he said, a half a million dollars yeah. how much he paid the police yeah. officers? Yeah. yeah. Rightfully so. You know where Streetport is at? It go get get down down there. It's, I used to man, I used to I used to my first show was in Streetport, you know. Yeah, it get down. It do. Yeah, it get down you in there. You got the Cooper so, Road, so, you got a bunch of places down and, there, man. And at the end of the day you gotta understand he gotta spend that money because he gotta protect his brand. Right. Somebody end up getting jammed up or fail. You seen that Travis Scott? At the concert, yeah. they put him yeah. on the whole mm-hmm. shit like it was his fault that all that happened. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta protect the brand, and you know we believe it. You know protecting the brand at all costs. That's why even when I move, I put even my concert, I will pay for my security. Yeah, I pay it back for my security just to make sure I'm straight. No, nah, that's what you can get everything to do. back. You can't get another life. That's you what, what you're what supposed I'm saying? to do. So my life is very valuable. I'm taking that in. Wow. Um, man, like I said, man, just wanted to come down here and sit down with you. I didn't think that we would be down here in Miami when I met you, but yeah. it's just an honor and a pleasure to Absolutely. bring you on Boss Talk 101. But I wouldn't get you out of here without asking you top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Top three. Uh, any genre, too. So this, uh, this thing can go anywhere. I uh, shit. Michael Jackson, of course. Wow. Uh, Pop. Okay. Future, <laughs> <laughs> Mike Park and Future, man. Shout that's a hell of, that's Shout a hell of a top three, man. Uh, how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock out with you? Um, you can hit me up at Juice the Mac J U R C T H E M A C on all platforms. And like I said, y'all y'all turn my music up, man. I'm really him, and I'm the biggest artist Oklahoma's ever seen. You know what I mean? I got the radio behind me. Oklahoma's playing my stuff all all through. You know, they didn't play my record. I just dropped the record. They didn't play my record like over 100 times on the radio. Well, that's a lot of spins. So that's a lot of support yeah, in my yeah. city. And the playlist is on block, uh, huh? Yeah, and yeah, for sure. And like I said, my city ain't never seen a movement this big. Like, we really, we really strong out there. So, you know. So, you, you know, you got all those small towns, Paul Valley, uh, uh, Per Se, oh, you got, uh, you got Chickasha, you got, uh, not to mention, uh, um, Tulsa, like, uh, is there anything that you do locally to connect with all those smaller cities? Absolutely. So, you know, I, if you're from Oklahoma, nine times out of ten, you are connected. You know what I mean? I play sports. I'm connected with a lot of people. But like I said, I got my own studio. That's Muskogee, one. yeah. Yeah, I got my own studio. And then it's like I do, I got my own promotional team. So we promote events. Like, I'm bringing juvenile uh Juvenile, I got the after party with just him. Just seen Juvenile in the oh, airport. Yeah, he going to hell good. right now. Yeah, no, but, I just seen him when we were flowing up. I just seen him. I'm like, damn, I'm not going to Juvenile. But, but I beautiful. see the airport thing that yeah. they own him on that airport. He yeah. don't want to sit in not first class. They kicked him out, him yeah. and his wife. Nah, that was, you ain't see well, that, did you? I, I did see you that. Seen I was happy. He, he, yeah, I wanted him to go viral some more. <laughs> we need them tickets sold. Yeah. <laughs> Go viral some more. Yeah. Wow, Shout man. out Genuine. I'll be Genuine. Genuine. <laughs> Juvie. Shout out wow. Juvie, man. Juvie. <laughs> Shout out Juvie. My bad, bro. Yeah. It's all love. Yeah, it's all love. But I, I thought that was bad for them to even have him get try to get up off his seat. Mm-hmm. That that was a sign to him. Like, why are you asking him to get up if that was his seat? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you know how we live in America. Come on now. You know, I, I done been in first class, and it's been some weird stuff, you know what I mean? Right. Oh, I gave you a You can't give my seat up. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> That's I not my fault. I money. Right. But, you know, like I said, it's another day in America. But, you know, they ain't, that type of stuff is stuff I can deal with. That's right. That's nothing. You feel wow. me? As long as they ain't trying to take my life or nothing like we that. We can make it through. Trust me, I, I'll take that. <laughs> and run with 10 it. 10 out of 10 times. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, 
you got to come through, through Dallas and come see me when I'm at on, on, at the hub. Um, but like I say, man, thank you so much, man. So. Uh, I'm going to be watching your career. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say, man, God bless you, man. For Boss sure. Talk 101, we love you. One love. It's going down. Keep it's taking care of that baby. Sure. Great segment. Sure. A Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And we out. Man.